Verzeo. Learn here, lead anywhere. Subscribe to our Verzeo channel and tap the bell icon to receive all notifications. Download the Verzeo app and get free content access. Yeah, good evening once again uh, to all of you. Uh, I think uh, most of the participants are uh, students uh, who are in uh, BTEC uh, in various years. Uh, this particular uh, presentation is about uh, cross-country pipelines for uh, transportation of uh, petroleum products. Uh, this uh, I am in this petroleum industry for the last uh, 29 years, right from uh, 1992 after uh, uh, finishing my B.Tech in uh, production engineering after my uh, B.Tech in uh, mechanical engineering and then uh, M.Tech in uh, production engineering. Uh, so basically in this particular presentation, uh, this is the flow of uh, topics, uh, starting with uh, an introduction uh, to the petroleum industry uh, worldwide as well as uh, Indian scenario. Then some audio visuals in between about upstream and downstream petroleum uh, companies. And then in fact, uh, today uh, we are getting a lot of messages uh, uh, in the WhatsApp that petrol price is going to touch 100 rupees a century and how to react to the century like uh, what is being done in a cricket field once the batsman has completed a century. Uh, let us see how these petroleum prices are varying. And then uh, we'll talk about uh, various ways of transportation of petroleum products uh, uh, in the industry and why pipeline transportation is so important uh, as far as this uh, logistics of petroleum product are concerned. And then some concepts about pipeline products and some audio visuals about uh, the pipeline project, some specialized techniques, and then some maintenance techniques about uh, pipelines. And uh, finally, some opportunities uh, uh, to the engineers and managers in the petroleum industry. As some of you have told, uh, these are the some of the oil majors in uh, petroleum uh, industry. Mobile, Total, Chevron, Chevron BP, uh, Shell. These are all very big companies. I'll just try to give you the world uh, top 10 in the next slide. Uh, these are the companies by revenue, uh, China Petroleum, uh, then uh, uh, China National uh, Cor Petroleum Corporation, then Petro China, Royal Dutch Shell, Saudi Arabian uh, Oil, BP, Exxon, Total, Chevron, Rosneft. These are the uh, top 10 uh, at one point of time. Uh, there will be some changes here and there. Uh, but more or less, these companies always come in the top 10. Then as far as India is concerned, uh, India has got uh, 10 Maharatna companies. Uh, these are the companies, uh, you can have a look at it. Indian Oil, Bharat Petroleum, ONGC, Power Grid, Sail, HP, Gale, Coal India, NTPC, and BHCL. Basically, uh, Maharatna companies are the topmost companies as far as uh, government PS are concerned. Uh, so, if you count the numbers out of this, out of the top 10, 5 belong to oil and gas. Uh, this is an indication that uh, Indian economy is uh, uh, is driven by uh, these oil and gas companies. And one more thing is uh, uh, the GDP also, there is a big contribution by these uh, companies. Uh, this is what is the table, same table, uh, whatever uh, I have shown. These are the companies once again, just to repeat the things. Then uh, let us talk about uh, uh, what are these petroleum products? It's not only petrol. Petroleum products are uh, petrol, diesel, kerosene, then LPG. Uh, it is a liquefied petroleum gas. Then aviation turbine fuel, uh, some lubricants, 
furnace oil, hexane, and then whatever we use uh, for uh, laying the roads, asphalt or bitumen or tar, whatever way you call, these are the uh, products, petroleum products normally. And then, uh, when you come to this oil prices, first let me just uh, show you the oil uh, prices, how they're fluctuating for the last nine months. It started, uh, uh, the one in uh, green is uh, diesel price, the one in red is uh, petrol price, and the one in uh, uh, blue is uh, crude oil price. Basically, whatever way the shift happens in the crude oil price uh, in the international market, Accordingly, uh, the prices of uh, petrol and diesel also change. You can see that the differential is uh, more or less equal. Uh, in the month of March, when the COVID has started, crude prices have fallen to the bare minimum. People used to say that uh, crude oil is uh, even cheaper than uh, 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 waste paper. And that is the kind of uh, thing which has come. And again, it is rising now. And accordingly, petrol and diesel prices are also rising. But I'll just, uh, in the next slide, I'll just show you how the comparison of uh, how this uh, prices of diesel and petrol are uh, evolved. Uh, let us take uh, the column where petrol is written. Crude oil is uh, the common rate uh, for both, either petrol or diesel or any petroleum product comes from the diesel, crude oil. So the price of crude oil for the month of December is around 21 rupees 70 price per liter approximately. Then after refining, it becomes around 27.75 rupees. That means around six rupees is the cost of refining this particular crude oil to make it as a petrol or diesel. And then it comes the excise duty, which is levied by the central government which is 119% approximately for petrol. So if you are making the petrol for around 28 rupees, then almost 33 rupees is added as an excise duty by central government. Uh, and then uh, diesel uh, dealer commission comes into picture. Dealer commission is nothing but uh, the amount given to the petrol pump uh, person because of his uh, selling, which is around 6% uh, and it comes to around three to four rupees. And then after that, state government also adds around 30% of uh, uh, VAT, uh, which is again 20 rupees. If you add all these amounts, uh, even though the crude oil price is coming uh, for 21 rupees, and then after refining also it is 28 rupees, but ultimately when we pay to the petrol pump person, it becomes around 84, 84 rupees. That is the price as of 31, 31st or 1st January of this year and the normally in the uh, international market the crude oil price changes from time to time so accordingly uh, the petrol or diesel price also changes every day because of that only if you see a newspaper uh, you can see that uh, the rate of uh, diesel or petrol is changing like that it has crossed 90 rupees by today and uh, it may touch 100 rupees also but uh, State government or central government, sometimes they, they try to reduce the rates of excess duty and VAT also. At that time, the rates may come down. It all depends on the dynamics. So now, uh, when it comes to a petroleum industry, I'll just touch upon uh, each uh, company, what are all the things that are there in the petroleum industry. Uh, first, you need to do the exploration and production of the crude oil and uh, natural gas from uh, ground, uh, either in ocean or uh, near to the ocean, we explore, that is called uh, upstream companies. Uh, anyone uh, knows any upstream company who explores the uh, crude oil in India or abroad? Yes, I think uh, wonderful answers are coming uh, from uh, from all of you. That's right. Uh, once this is 
exploration is done uh, then uh, it uh, is transported the crude oil is transported uh, either by ships or pipeline to the downstream industries uh, for refining of that crude oil and then it is marketed uh, by the petroleum companies again uh, any hint about the downstream companies uh, can you share some downstream companies names so i'll uh, just uh, introduce you and uh, show you how the companies uh, downstream company and upstream company performs i'll uh, in the next slide i'll just show a small uh, av uh, just please watch carefully and then if you have any more doubts you can ask i am just giving a av about uh, an upstream company now Half a century ago, as India awoke to light and freedom, Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru had a vision to build an oil and gas industry in a developing country. Forty-five years after formation, the Oil and Natural Gas Corporation is India's most valuable company and an organization that makes every Indian's heart swell with a sense of pride and ownership. This saga of success was created by the thousands of oil people who toiled in all corners of India, facing all is kinds of hardships. Is the AV audio uh, audible? In 1958, ONGC went to Kambe and made the first discovery at Lunage. Then came Ankaleshwar, where ONGC struck gold, black, liquid gold, on the 14th of May, 1960. Ankaleshwar continues to produce one of the best crudes in the world, even today, and is in fact the first jewel in the crown of ONGC. In the early 70s, ONGC went offshore and discovered a giant oil field called Mumbai High. This discovery, along with subsequent discoveries of a number of huge oil and gas fields in the western offshore, changed the oil scenario of the country. Subsequently, over 5 billion tons of hydrocarbons present within the country were discovered. The most important contribution of ONGC, however, is its self-reliance and development of core competence competitive level. ONGC is modernizing its fleet of drilling rigs and related equipment to elevate its operations to the best in class level. Investments of around $440 million are going towards this modernization. In keeping with setting world-class standards, ONGC establishments have received more than 62 ISO certifications and other accreditations in a single year. This means practically every week one or more ONGC establishments have received a certification. Today, ONGC is dedicated to excellence by leveraging competitive advantages in research and development and technology. Today, with its market capitalization crossing 500 billion rupees, or $10.9 billion, ONGC is India's most valuable company and the fourth most profitable oil and gas company in Asia, according to a survey by the Asia Week magazine. For 
ONGC became the first Indian company to register a net profit exceeding 100 billion rupees or 2.2 billion dollars. On 3rd September 2003, ONGC Group's market capitalization crossed 21 billion dollars. According to Platt's Energy Business Technology Survey, ONGC is today the world's number two exploration and production company. In July 2001, ONGC adopted a 20-year corporate strategy whose first objective is to double the reserve base from 6 billion tons to 12 billion tons. The second objective is to increase the overall recovery from the current 28% to 40% in order to overcome the natural decline in all producing fields. The third objective of ONGC's corporate strategy is to tie up at least 20 million tons of equity oil and gas every year from its operations abroad. With properties in Vietnam, Russia, Myanmar, Iraq, Iran, Sudan, Libya and Syria, ONGC Videsh Limited has made substantial progress in the last two years. In Vietnam, OVL is investing 228 million US dollars and has a 45% share in two large offshore gas fields. With an investment of 669 million US dollars, OVL has a 25% stake in the Greater Nile oil project in Sudan. ONGC Videsh has invested an estimated 1.75 billion US dollars in the Sakhalin 1 project in Russia, making it the largest single foreign investment ever made by any Indian corporate and the largest foreign direct investment ever into Russia. On the 30th of November 2003, ONGC spudded its first ultra deep water well in the Gulf of Kutch, launching its deep sea exploration project, Sagar Samriti. Targeting to discover and produce oil and gas from fields under water depths of up to three kilometers, Sagar Samriti is expected to add at least one billion tons of oil and oil equivalent gas to existing reserves over the next two to three decades. From Mumbai High to Sagar Samriti, ONGC continues at the cutting edge of global technology. Today, ONGC is India's only integrated petroleum group, actively involved in exploration, production, refining, transportation, plus marketing. A rejuvenated ONGC is ready to take off as a global energy provider and has a vision to be a world-class oil and gas company integrated in the energy business. ONGC is truly making tomorrow brighter. So that is the uh, one AV about uh, the upstream company, there is a question in the uh, chart box about what is upstream and what is downstream. Uh, as far as petroleum is concerned, petroleum industry is concerned, upstream is nothing but uh, which explores the oil, uh, crude oil uh, from the particular uh, fields, oil fields. Whereas uh, downstream companies are uh, uh, the companies which refine and sell the petroleum products. And in general, upstream and downstream, uh, there is a definition. Uh, from wherever the water flows uh, from the top, that is called upstream. Whereas, uh, wherever it comes down, it is called the downstream. Uh, for a river uh, like uh, Godavari River, uh, Maharashtra is the upstream and uh, Andhra Pradesh is the downstream. It is something similar to that. Uh, uh, we have seen uh, a picture about, uh, I mean, a small little AV about uh, ONGC. Uh, then, as you can see, uh, the crude oil is taken off from uh, offshore oil fields and uh, 
uh, onshore oil fields also. Uh, and I, I think uh, every, uh, by now uh, you might have understood ONGC is the Oil and Natural Gas Commission. That is the full form of that. And then uh, from there it comes to the downstream companies, uh, this crude oil. Uh, there is uh, one more AV about the downstream companies, which I'll be showing now. One of the companies, there are uh, multiple companies, uh, which already all of you have told. Uh, before getting uh, drilling down into the pipelines and uh, uh, getting into the actual uh, pipelines transportation, uh, a small uh, AV about uh, a downstream company, I'll show now. After this, I'll be starting the pipeline subject with a small clip from a James Bond movie. Uh, probably all of you might be might have seen some James Bond movies. Uh, just to kickstart about the pipelines, uh, I'll also just share one uh, James Bond movie clip. Before that, uh, let's have a look at a downstream company, AV. Our dreams drive aspirations, inspire our thinking and actions, actions that can change our destinies. For Hindustan Petroleum, every moment is a mission, guided by a shared vision, caring for the customers even while fueling the growing aspirations of the nation at large for a sustainable future filled with energy. Hindustan Petroleum. Caring for tomorrow. HPCL has its foundations in Global Mooring. Established in 1952 as Stanvac, later merged with Esso and further amalgamated with Lube India and Caltex Oil to form Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited as a truly diversified energy conglomerate with a nationwide energy infrastructure. Refineries in Mumbai and Vishakhapatnam a joint venture refinery in Bhatinda, a network of cross-country fuel pipelines, bulk storage terminals and depots, and over 12,000 retail fuel stations. Today, HPCL is the fastest growing Indian company in the Fortune Global 500 list. HPCL heralded the transformation of petroleum retailing in India by introducing the concept of e-fuel stations. The stylish and technologically advanced HP fuel stations have become convenient stopovers for the entire family. For quality fuel as well as a host of modern day conveniences to serve the multiple needs of customers. HP Gas, supplied from a network of LPG bottling plants, fuels the kitchens of nearly 43 million households. Enabling online booking, HPCL offers greater convenience to customers with prompt service and utmost transparency. In order to meet the growing demand for LPG, HPCL has installed the world's largest flex-speed carousel near Hyderabad, set up India's first underground LPG storage cavern in Vishakhapatnam, and the country's largest LPG import terminal in Mangalore. HP Engine Oil is a fast-growing lubricant brand in India produced from seven lube blending plants of HPCL backed by HP's lube refinery being the largest in India. Available in more than 350 grades, HP Engine Oil constantly adds newer grades thanks to the continuous efforts of its lube R&D center. In the aviation sector, HP Aviation has become the fastest growing aviation fuel marketer in India with 35 aviation fuel stations including airport installations, storage facilities and dedicated ATF pipelines. 
HBCL is driven by the committed teamwork of its people, collectively exploring the future with strategic plans to achieve multi-dimensional growth in the coming decades. Leveraging information technology by seamlessly integrating all its operations powered by a state-of-the-art information system center in Hyderabad. Setting up a corporate R&D center in Bengaluru for developing sustainable energy solutions. Diversifying into upstream oil and gas exploration and production, natural gas marketing and renewable energy sources. Adopting proven risk management processes for the safety of people and security of assets. Concerted efforts for environmental protection at all the installations. Integrating business goals with inclusive growth of the community through projects to empower the underprivileged, such as healthcare, childcare, education, vocational training, and self employment opportunities. People are HBCL's prime resource harmoniously living in an environment conducive to nurturing talent and skills to achieve continuous excellence. A vibrant organization with majority of young people guided by a leadership team of experienced professionals committed to nurturing core values of corporate governance and developing leaders to face the challenges of tomorrow. For HPCL, it's a collective mission of nation building, fueling the hopes of over a billion people, while writing one success story after another, laying the foundation for India's most modern refinery and petrochemicals complex in Rajasthan, striving for a future full of energy, caring for a better tomorrow. So that is uh, what is about a downstream company. Basically, uh, all this uh, AV is just, uh, I just wanted to show to expose yourself to what is the gamut of this particular company and uh, what kind of uh, engineering departments are working in this, like from uh, civil, mechanical, electrical, instrumentation, uh, computer science. Each and every engineer has a scope to work in this uh, particular organizations uh, where uh, the returns are huge when compared to any other uh, kind of uh, uh, sector uh, that is what is the idea of uh, showing all the kinds of uh, uh, fields in which this petroleum sector is working uh, as far as i told you uh, the downstream companies start from a refinery uh, in the refinery the crude oil is uh, refined and then transported to the storage terminals. Uh, you can see it on the right side through one of the means, either uh, through tank wagons, which you might have seen, or the pipelines, cross-country pipelines, uh, where, uh, in fact, I'm handling a big project of around 3,000 crores uh, worth right now. And then uh, tank trucks also uh, can transport the product uh, from this particular refineries to depots. And finally, it can be transported through this uh, ocean tankers also. Only thing is uh, pipelines uh, have got the biggest advantage uh, of uh, having a high scale economy. Uh, cross country pipelines means uh, these are the pipelines which run from a refinery to a far off place, maybe 300 kilometers, 500 kilometers, or sometimes 1000, 2000 kilometers also. Uh, so I just wanted, I want to uh, explain about uh, what kind of uh, pipelines uh, we have. Before that, a small uh, AV uh, from a James Bond movie uh, through which I first came to know about uh, a pipeline that something is existing. Just have a look at this. Uh, you can also get an idea of what it is. Anyway, here uh, in this particular uh, clip, James Bond enters the pipeline and travels through the pipeline to some other location where one uh, bomb is uh, installed. Uh, after seeing this particular uh, clip, I'll just uh, compare in actual scenario what happens. It is not a realistic scenario, but uh, it's a, you can have a look of uh, what a pipeline is. Look 
at that. That's not right. What is it? An observation rig. Travels inside the pipe, looking for cracks. Shut it down. I don't understand. It, it won't respond. The place is clean. No sign the bomb of the bomb. is in the pipeline. Oh, my God. They must have brought it through here. That would explain the attack. Heading for the oil terminal. Mm -hmm. We would do the most damage. Have your men evacuate that terminal. So now, do you believe me? This is an emergency situation, so please, clear the room. Do it. He's going for the oil. Of course. The one pipeline the West is counting on to supply our reserves for the next century. Do you have an idea? Maybe. How far is that rig from the terminal? And how fast is it traveling? It's uh, 106 miles from the terminal going 70 miles an hour. We've got 78 minutes. Do you have another rig? There's one parked in the passageway ahead of it. Charles, can you get me out there? Of course. Wait a minute. Are you going to do what I think you're going to do? What do I need to defuse a nuclear bomb? Me. So this is how a cross-country pipeline looks like. Travels from uh, one refinery to various cities. There it is. Patched to the In reality way. also, this is how it looks like. And in Indian conditions, uh, it is underground. Speed up so the other rig catches up with us. And this is the inside you. portion of the That's pipeline. Uh, it's yeah, a big pipeline in which, uh, in fact, uh, exactly uh, people physics. never travel. But in this particular fiction uh, situation, uh, James Bond is uh, traveling to defuse a bomb in the pipeline. They're in the pipeline. They're on the move. If there's even the slightest chance Bond will succeed, he's the best we have. Although I'd never tell him. I hope you're right. Here he comes! It's closing up! Faster! Stripped the screw heads. Someone's tampered with the bomb.
but the triggering charge blew out a 50-yard section of the pipe. And Bond? Nothing. I'm so sorry. So that is how a pipeline looks like. But uh, in the actual scenario, the control rooms and all, whatever uh, you have seen, those are actually similar to that. Entire operations are controlled from the control rooms through uh, various instrumentation and uh, SCADA devices. Uh, the only thing is, a uh, pipeline is never empty. It is always filled with the product. Uh, James Bond cannot enter into that. But uh, we use an instrument called uh, Intelligent Pig, which we introduce, uh, which goes like how this uh, James Bond has traveled. Uh, it is uh, to check the effectiveness of uh, this particular pipeline, whether any kind of uh, uh, corrosion is there, any dents are there, all those things uh, that intelligent uh, pick can detect. Uh, you can have a look uh, in the latter part of this particular presentation about that. In the meanwhile, I'll just uh, explain about uh, various advantages of this pipeline transportation, uh, which can in fact uh, reduce the rate of uh, petroleum products. Uh, in, uh, uh, these petroleum products are, uh, means this pipeline transportation is uh, having all these advantages. Uh, during Even during the high floods, tsunamis, everything, then also uh, when the trains cannot move, when the uh, trucks cannot move, still petroleum products are being supplied through these pipelines to the entire country uh, because of which people are able to move. Without these pipelines, normally uh, we get a disruption in case of uh, any heavy cyclones like tsunami and all. And this is the cost comparison uh, of uh, logistics, transportation. Uh, suppose if you are uh, transporting uh, the petroleum products by road, it may cost around 5 rupees uh, per metric ton per kilometer. Whereas uh, if you are uh, transporting it through rail, it uh, comes down, cost comes down. And uh, if you are transporting by pipelines, it further comes down to around only 50 pice. So you can say almost uh, one tenth of uh, a road transportation cost. This is the advantage of uh, pipeline movements. So that's why uh, all over the world, pipelines are encouraged and uh, day by day, the pipelines are increasing and the job opportunities in the pipeline field, whether it's a pipeline project or operations or whatever it is, uh, the op job opportunities are becoming more and more for all kinds of disciplines of engineers. Uh, so once uh, the from the pipelines, the product is uh, shifted to uh, these uh, terminals. You might have seen, all of you might have seen these kind of tanks everywhere. From refineries, product comes into these depots and terminals. From there, uh, uh, through transport, uh, through tank trucks, it reaches the retail outlets. We call it as retail outlets or petrol pumps. Product reaches here. So whatever the cost uh, we have told, uh, from 26 rupees up to 90 rupees, this is the kind of uh, cost that is getting added uh, with a lot of uh, taxation in between. And uh, just to give you some statistics about the longest hydrocarbon pipelines in the world, uh, overall in the world around 3.5 million kilometers of pipelines are there. And most of the pipelines are there in the US, uh, almost 65%. So job opportunities are very high in US, followed by Russia and Canada. These three countries uh, are taking almost 75% of the pipelines. And the longest pipelines in the world are uh, this uh, China and then uh, some of the other pipelines, which I'll show you in the next slides also. Uh, this is the West East uh, natural gas pipeline, almost 7,300 kilometers. It is in the country of China. The next is the National Unification Gas Pipeline. It is almost 5,000 kilometers in Brazil. Then Yamal Europe Pipeline. This is one more uh, long pipeline in the world. Almost uh, again, uh, 5,000 uh, kilometers long. Then Trans-Saharan Pipeline. Again, uh, starts in Nigeria and ends in Algeria. The uh, pipeline capacity is 30 billion uh, cubic meters of natural gas. 
and within india also there are a lot of uh, operating pipelines uh, uh, product pipelines and crude oil pipelines there are two different pipelines are there i'll just talk about uh, product pipelines which are there uh, by various oil companies indian oil uh, has got a very big division of uh, pipelines uh, where uh, all types of engineers are recruited almost i think uh, around 10000 engineers i understand are working in uh, indian oil corporation uh, headed by a director followed by uh, this bpcl and hpcl uh, they also got uh, almost 3000 kilometers uh, long pipelines each and this is how a pipeline network uh, looks like in india uh, you can see the stars everywhere the stars are uh, stars are nothing but uh, uh, the refineries all over india from there all pipelines are originating into the heart of the nation you can see kanpur bina manglia raipur sikandrabad chittur down south uh, trichy madurai right up to jalandhar ambala batinda ajmer jaipur all the cities are uh, getting their petroleum products uh, through these pipelines uh, pipelines are basically lifeline of uh, india you can say without pipelines uh, there is nothing Uh, there is a small area about uh, the concept to commissioning of pipelines. Uh, before that, uh, I just wanted to show what are the steps involved. These are the various steps involved in a pipeline construction. then one uh, small avi about uh, actual pipeline in any in a foreign country how it takes place just have a look pipeline design important because pipelines can run across entire continents as we look at design today we'll see it involves the routing the pipeline will take how the pipe and the steel in it is made how the pipe is coated and how the pipeline will be built to begin experts go out to the proposed route and gather information for designers there are rules hundreds of pages of them for how pipelines are to be built pipeline designers use computer models to apply those rules the colors vary based on specifications the designer has entered where it is red the design may have to change Designers have high resolution photos and data from advanced radar called lidar. Every pipeline must also have an environmental plan. Environmental care in pipeline construction is exhaustive. When I first started working in the pipeline industry, there were no environmental experts. Now there are likely as many environmental experts as there are engineers. Much of the steel in the pipe is recycled steel. steel composition is key in the incredible heat of the electric arc furnace where iron is melted samples are taken several times during the process and are analyzed as the steel is formulated dozens of alloys can be added to iron to bring the steel to the specifications required steel is flattened and rolled to be made into pipe now we're at the pipe mill This spiral form is common for larger pipe. Welding the continuous seams is completely automated and the seam weld is checked ultrasonically. Quality control. Here random samples are stretched to confirm they break only when they're supposed to. Every pipe length will be manually examined on the outside and yes everyone on the inside too. There are many checks for each length of pipe, but this is probably the ultimate. Each length of pipe is capped and filled with water. The water pressure is increased well beyond the pressure specified for the pipeline it will go into. The idea is to confirm that each length of pipe is sound before it ships. Steel inevitably rusts when exposed to moisture in the air. So at the coating mill, a blasting process cleans and etches the pipe. Once again, a surface inspection, imperfections are taken care of. Then each pipe length is prepared for application of the coating. 
The pipe is heated to just about as hot as an average kitchen oven can be. The coating is sprayed on as if it were paint, but in fact, it's powdered epoxy. Dozens of nozzles doing the spraying, the heat in the pipe activates the epoxy and bonds it to the steel. The pipe has cooled. This is a scan looking for tiny imperfections in the coating. They will be fixed, and the pipe will be ready to be shipped to a pipeline installation. Construction. Pipeliners often work in winter when the frozen ground is most stable for machinery. The pipeline will match the contour of the land. Pipe lengths will be lined up together and hoisted onto temporary supports. Joined with sophisticated welding, several passes around the pipe for each connection. Each weld will be verified with ultrasound. A trench, deep enough to provide a specified amount of cover. And now the assembled sections of pipeline can be lowered into the trench. Valves, huge faucets at regular intervals will allow product flow to be stopped if required. Backfilling will be gentle so that nothing damages the pipe or its coating as the land is restored. Except for occasional surface facilities, you won't see much of a pipeline. A meter or more beneath the ground, it will transport fuel for our homes and vehicles Actually, pipelines are underground. decades to come. So once it is Probably laid and buried, as long as we require uh, fossil fuels. above that vehicles can move. That's the way pipelines are designed. So that's why these are all environmental friendly and uh, uh, doesn't affect any kind of uh, traffic or anything. And uh, as far as uh, Pipeline uh, designs are concerned, a lot of codes are there. Uh, you have to follow all these codes uh, to design the pipelines. Uh, you'll, uh, the, mo the moment you enter into this particular field, uh, you'll be knowing about all these codes as well as uh, other uh, standards also. And uh, as we saw in that uh, particular AV, uh, it, it is not as smooth as uh, what we have seen in the AV. Uh, there are a lot of uh, challenges in the pipeline construction, especially when you are crossing guards. One such uh, a guard construction, I am just showing a small AV uh, in the mirror. Uh, you can just have a look of uh, one pipeline which is uh, for LPG. HPCL received PNGRB authorization for laying LPG product pipeline from Mangalore to Bangalore with a spur line to Mysore and the works commenced at site in September 2013. Approval for forest land diversions and tree cutting approval in other lands was delayed despite best efforts. One of the major challenge in this project is laying pipeline in the toughest and hostile terrain and alongside existing high pressure Petronet MHB product pipeline. The pipeline need to cross Western Ghats through Charmadi Ghat. This is second oldest Ghat on the planet from Neria to Gutti, spanning a length of 22 km with sharp elevation difference of 100 to 1100 meters MSL within this short span. This stretch includes 14 km of thick rubber estate beyond Balur Reserve Forest towards Neria an 8 km of Balud Reserve Forest in Chikmanglu district which is a part of buffer zone of Elephant Corridor abutting Bhadra Tiger Reserve Forest. This section of Ghat is home to wildlife species like leopard, bear, elephant and most part of pipeline crosses through Elephant Corridor. It is also home for most venomous reptiles like King Cobra and Russell Vipers. The section receives copious rain in monsoon, even to cross by walk, thus restricting the working period from December to May, only in a year. The section has steep slope in rocky terrain, prone to frequent landslides. With no communication facilities planning and executing the pipeline was a big challenge. Narrow corridor for laying pipeline in the ridges of two saddles means multiple crossing of Petronet pipeline. The area has 600 meter length hard basaltic rock which requires controlled blasting. The abnormal delay in MOEF 
state forest approval for forest diversion till October 2014 has left us with one working season only while the terrain requires a minimum two such seasons. The execution was divided into 14 sections with the meticulous planning as logistics played a key role. Jobs had to be planned in sequential manner from both Gutti and Neria side of Ghat. ROU clearance was done with a short period of one month and temporary pipe stack yards set to first move the pipelines into Ghat, improvised tractor operated pipe carriers and sledges. Communication facilities through VHF towers were established due to restricted ROU and multiple bends in trench welding has been planned. Working hours limited from sunrise to sunset and all people have to come back to base camp due to expected wildlife movements in night. The 600 meter waterfall with a 70 degree slope granite stone face required mammoth two month effort to even form the trench. Owing to sensitiveness associated with this car, study on elephant corridor and movements, biodiversity study and carbon stock depletion assessment were done by IISC with the Asian Nature Conservation Foundation assistance. National Institute of Rock Mechanics was engaged to carry out design and execution philosophy for control blasting in waterfall area and the impact assessment made through on-site simulation and vibration velocity measurements. Base camps were set up with all medical facilities at Neria and Gutti. An ambulance with all first aid facilities and doctors were positioned at base camps on each side of the ghat to meet any contingency. Gunmen were engaged to lead each side team for ensuring personnel safety against animal attacks. To make approach side, slope of hills were cut up to 7 meters height involving stupendous earthwork and meticulous planning step by step. Logistics were provided only through four-wheel drive vehicles and chain-mounted vehicles. Section-wise trenching was done and welding carried out in trench under steel hood for protection of workmen against any falling debris. Soft padding, rock shield and slow breakers at frequent intervals were provided for pipeline safety and stability. Control blasting for waterfall area through specialized teams were done using guide ropes and safety belts for drilling holes and formation of trench. Through regular project review meetings, toolbox talks, the entire project team of HPCL, consultant Mott McDonald, laying contractor Ace Pipelines formed a well-knit motivated team formulated and executed strategies and met the challenging target of completing the cart in one season. It is a matter of great pride to each one of these team members that despite many odds, the target could finally be achieved by the first week of June just in time. This has now paved the way to complete the project ahead of revised completion target of November 16. Uh, this was basically just shown that uh, to show that there are some challenges also, but anyway, once uh, you complete that, it's a, it's of a great importance uh, to the nation as well as uh, uh, career progression to the engineers involved in this. Uh, these are some of the pictures of that same God. And uh, sometimes if there's any river, uh, then to cross the river, either we construct a bridge or uh, drill uh, underwater. There is a technique called uh, HVD, a technique uh, to drill the pipeline underwater. Uh, just uh, one minute video, I will uh, try to show for that particular uh, HVD technique. Again, uh, this is a specialized uh, technique. Uh, Horizontal by... directional drilling, commonly referred to as HDD, is a surface to surface installation technique that is comprised of three primary stages including pilot core, reaming, and product pipe installation. This method of construction is typically used to install pipelines in areas not amenable for open cut construction, including major water bodies, wide or busy highways, railroads, environmentally sensitive areas, and urban environments. 
During construction, no disruption occurs to any feature being crossed by the HDD installation. With proper design and good HDD construction practices, the HDD method allows for the installation of pipelines with no impacts to the crossing features. Limited workspace is established on both sides of the crossing to house the necessary drilling equipment and to facilitate product pipe string fabrication. These sites are cleared and leveled to facilitate drilling operations. Silt fencing and other erosion control measures are placed around the site. If necessary, sound curtains are erected at the drilling sites for noise mitigation. The drill rig and power unit is placed into position on the drill alignment. A drill pipe skid is positioned next to the drill rig. A small entry pit, approximately five to six feet deep, is excavated at the front of the drill rig to collect drilling fluid returns. A separation plant, holding tanks, and drilling fluid pumps are set up and plumbed with the drill rig. A control cabin is placed immediately next to the drill rig. This cabin houses the controls used to control the drill rig and track the drill bit location. Drilling of the pilot bore commences by pushing and rotating drill pipe connected to the drill bit along a predetermined path from the drill rig entry location towards the exit side located on the far side of the crossing. A mixture of water and bentonite clay, referred to as drilling fluids, is continuously pumped through the drill pipe to the cutting tools where it mixes with the soil or bedrock cuttings. This mixture flows back to the drill rig location carrying the entrained cuttings where it is transferred to a separation plant to remove the cuttings and recycle the fluid component for reuse down hole. Aside from assisting in removal of cuttings, the drilling fluids also serve to stabilize the bore, cool the cutting tools, and lubricate the pipe string. As the pilot bore is advanced, a tracking system is used to locate the position and orientation of the drill bit. Steering adjustments are completed by the drill rig operator to maintain the design alignment. When the drill bit exits the ground surface on the far side of the crossing, the pilot bore stage of the installation process is complete. The pilot bore is typically enlarged by pulling reaming tools of successively larger diameter from the exit location back towards the drill rig location. Depending upon the diameter of the product pipe, multiple passes with reamers of increasing diameter may be required to incrementally enlarge the pilot bore to its final diameter. Upon completion of the full reaming passes, the condition of the HDD bore is assessed by completing what is known as a swab pass. The pass consists of pushing or pulling a slightly smaller diameter reamer through the fully reamed bore from start to finish. The diameter of the swab pass is typically smaller than the full reamed diameter, but greater than the diameter of the product pipe to be installed. Like the pilot bore drilling process, Drilling fluids are continuously pumped through the drill pipe to the cutting tools where it mixes and entrains the soil or bedrock cuttings into the fluid. This fluid aids in removal of the cuttings, continues to stabilize the bore, cool the cutting tools, and lubricates the pipe string. Sections of product pipe are transported and positioned at the HDD exit location. The pipe sections are then welded together to form a completed pipe string. Coatings are applied to welds and tests are completed to ensure proper coating application. The product pipe string is then pressure tested with water, drained, and placed on pipe rollers. Pipe rollers and cranes, or side booms, are used to assist the pullback process. The rollers and slings used in conjunction with the lifting equipment not only provide support for the fully fabricated pipe string, but also help reduce the amount of friction acting on the section of pipe above ground and reducing the overall amount of force required to pull the product pipe into the bore. The rollers and equipment are also used to position the product pipe to match the angle of the bore where the pipe enters the ground surface. Upon completion of the reaming process and once the product pipe string is completely fabricated and welds x-rayed and coated, the final stage of the installation process, pullback, can begin. 
The pullback process consists of pulling the fabricated product pipe from the pipe entry location towards the drill rig. The HDD installation is complete when the product pipe reaches the drill rig location. Final checks and surveys are completed on the installed product pipe. With the completion of the pullback operations, the drilling equipment is demobilized and the work sites are restored to pre-existing conditions. What is the uh, uh, horizontal uh, directional drilling under the water or any kind of surface? Even if some buildings are there, uh, below the buildings also these pipelines can be laid using this particular technique. And as far as uh, the engineers are concerned, in the pipeline field, you can see a lot of equipment, the switch yards, substations. Uh, for uh, uh, instrumentation engineers, uh, uh, SCADA, PLC techniques are used. In fact, all the pipelines have got world-class world, uh, world -class automation uh, facilities. All the pipelines are operated. This is a real picture, uh, which is uh, one of the stations. Uh, and uh, you may recollect that James Bond movie where almost uh, similar uh, panels were shown. And this is the actual picture where uh, uh, from a refinery, first uh, some booster pumps will be there uh, to pump the product. Then from the booster pump, it comes into the filters. From the filters, there will be a big pumps uh, of uh, almost 6.6 .6 kV uh, high voltage uh, pumps through which the uh, Product is pumped uh, into the cross country pipelines. Uh, this is the substation. And these are the facilities in the dispatch station. Then, uh, once the uh, pumps are uh, using uh, to push the product, it is not sufficient. Sometimes uh, you need to use intermediate pump stations also. Suppose if the pipeline length is 300 kilometers, then at the after around 150 kilometers, you need to boost up the pressure for which intermediate booster stations are there. And in between, uh, you will have some intermediate receiving station come booster pump stations also. You take the product into these uh, tanks through the pipeline as well as you boost the pressure further uh, to the next uh, receiving station. And these are the typical uh, final receiving stations uh, where uh, products are uh, petrol, diesel, kerosene are uh, taken into this tank. And uh, you, need, you may wonder uh, that uh, all the products like petrol, diesel, kerosene can be pumped in a single pipeline. It need not be through multiple pipelines. That is the beauty of uh, there's a technique called interface handling through which uh, we pump uh, different products in the same pipeline. Uh, in the pipeline, uh, because of this automation, there are flow computers, flow meters, everything is there. And uh, as you have seen in the James Bond movie, there is uh, something, James Bond has entered uh, this uh, particular uh, pipeline, but whereas, as I told you, we use a pigging facility uh, to clean the pipeline. For that uh, for purpose, normally, pigs are inserted into that. Uh, uh, we call them as intelligent pigs, which can gauge each and every parameter of the pipeline. I'll just show one small AV on that, uh, how this intelligent pig uh, is uh, uh, working in the pipeline. The German company called Rosen, uh, uh, who are the pioneers in this uh, inline inspection tools. These are called intelligent pick. The one which is coming from the top is an intelligent pick that gets inserted into the pipeline. Uh, there is an opening uh, like where the James Bond entered. Uh, this is a particular uh, thing that can be inserted into the pipeline. This being an intelligent pick uh, with uh, uh, which uh, works under electromagnetic technique, it enters the pipeline, travels all along the pipeline. While, uh, while traveling, it gathers all the information uh, regarding the health of the pipeline. This is called a pig which is traveling. It travels uh, along with the product. You don't have to stop any pumping of the product. It travels like that. If there is any defect in this particular uh, thing, it catches the defect uh, through this electromagnetic field. 
and there are some uh, loggers inside this particular uh, big which log the data all along the pipeline this is a cut section being shown here travels all along the underground portion and again at the end uh, it comes out uh, like this is a total pipeline uh, what is being shown so there is some something called a receiving pick receiving station uh, after the pick is traveling finally it reaches this particular uh, pick receiving station barrel where the pick can be collected back and then uh, the data loggers can be taken out and analyzed for the health of the pipeline After traveling almost 150 kilometers or so, the pick has reached now uh, to the receiving station. This is called pick receiving barrel. It is entered here. Here you can see one more uh, cap here, from where the pick can be collected out. Now this pig has uh, come out. Uh, through the data loggers, uh, we analyze uh, the things, and finally uh, there are some uh, like uh, try uh, for this uh, T R E I try for uh, uh, telecom sector uh, in uh, petroleum sector also there is something called P N G R B, uh, which is a regulator for uh, petroleum industry uh, that is uh, kept with an object of promoting competition and other things. they have certain functions also as uh, you can see on this uh, they control basically all these pipelines as well as the other petrol pumps everything and there is an authorization process involved uh, uh, through which uh, you need to apply to the pngrb like uh, nowadays you might have seen uh, for the uh, various types of uh, 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 this particular uh, things telecom also a lot of competitors are there like that uh, in pngrb also there is an authorization process by paying some fee you can get into that and finally this is the last slide as far as uh, salaries of uh, uh, these engineers uh, for the beginners in india for the petroleum you can see the bottom line total the starting uh, ctc is coming to around 16 lakhs uh, per annum uh, a good package uh, in case uh, if you prefer to enter the sector any branch people are allowed to enter into the sector mostly the recruitment is uh, through a gate exam uh, you can all uh, try to enter this particular sector through this and uh, that is the end of uh, my presentation in case uh, if you have any kind of queries uh, please revert